lecturing for about a couple of years, uh, saved uh, really uh, a number of lives. And unfortunately, only when this uh, initiative was, uh, was uh, ended, uh, the situation became more difficult, as in the last months. So we hope that Europe can live up to our expectations and the expectation of all uh, the world about the, uh, let's say, uh, rescuing and uh, helping these people uh, who, for, for desperation, and really for need, try to, to come to our, our continent. Uh, the problem, of course, is multifaceted. Uh, there are many implications, as you can imagine, not only humanitarian, but also security, and also uh, food issues, uh, health issues, and so on. So it's very, very um, complex. But I think that with the help of all the international community, and in particular of the other EU member states, Italy and other countries involved, like Greece and uh, Malta in particular, uh, we can cope and solve the problem, or at least to contain and delineate the, the uh, tragic uh, events that we are witnessing on the television in the, in the last months. So I think to discuss uh, this issue in Jordan would be of uh, great interest for everyone, for uh, Jordanian people, for Italian people, also because I think the suggestions for solutions and for uh, coping with these problems could come from everyone. Not only as a solution in its pocket, but anybody could give a, a contribution, an idea, an inspiration to do better and to save lives. So really, I, I welcome your suggestion very much. Sure. If I may, sorry, if I may add two points to the, uh, to the request of uh, teaching Italian in uh, the schools. I can just uh, give you two advantages of um, bringing Italian also in uh, public school. Because first of all, you will need teachers, and you have the faculty of uh, Italian at the Jordan University that could uh, provide teachers, of course, train them. And also, if you set a school, an Italian school in Amman, our Italian, let's say, Tauji, is recognized all over Europe. So you're not allowed only to register in uh, Italian university, but you can go in any country in Europe. So, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Ambassador, allow me, please, uh, you know, and you reply to immigration, which means a lot to us here in Jordan in particular. You mentioned cope with three times. Question to you as representing your esteemed government in Jordan. I expect that when you use the word cope with, cope with, yes. you mean it as presenting your government here. Cope with might mean prevent immigrants from reaching Italy or accepting them as such. Would you please explain? Yes. Uh, you know, the, the solution uh, in Europe in our opinion, it should be a collective solution. Uh, what I mean is that, for example, when the people are coming to Europe and they arrive in Italy, I mean, not all of them could stay in Italy for you know, normal reasons. I mean, it's difficult to, to, to have the possibility to give them a decent life to all of them. So in our opinion, for example, in Europe, we should uh, uh, work out a system in which maybe they arrive in the country, and then there is a system already uh, arranged before in which you have quota. You know, so some people go to Italy, some people go to Spain, some people go to Denmark, some people go to Germany, preferably according to their preferences, of course, uh, according to maybe the um, um, family, the, the, the relatives already present in the country, so you can maybe rejoin them. So, I mean, according to some criteria, general criteria, you should, I think, put up a system in which people could uh, spread about Europe and not put maybe in some uh, places. In Italy now, what's the problem? They arrive. They are put in some, uh, let's say, uh, centers. But these centers are made maybe for 1,000 people. They are maybe 5,000. So the condition of life of these people in the center are not human. If you can really uh, uh, share this, this, uh, this uh, problem, this burden, I think that could be an advantage both for the, the, the European countries, because it's more rational, but also for the immigrants, because they get what they want. I mean, a decent life, which is the aim, the target, not only to enter the country, but to live in a decent way, which is important, I think, also for a question of dignity. 
and also not to become uh, prey of criminals or maybe someone who make them slaves because that's the, the actual uh, you know, reality in this moment. So we want to avoid all the bad consequences for them and to have uh, the acceptance by the local communities of a reasonable number of people. At the same time, these people should be inserted and become part of the community and not marginalized in the periphery or in the suburbs. He wants to have to. So do you think that with Islamophobia, yes. the European countries would accept the nice idea as the end of it forward? Uh, I think, yeah. I, I, I think, I think, I think this subject uh, a bit deserves a, a, a seminar, seminar, uh, uh, and uh, a round table. I have just come from Dubai last night. I was uh, the keynote speaker at a UN meeting in Dubai at the International Humanitarian City, uh, organized by the United Nations, on the subject of refugees and I am working with the United Nations on developing a concept for a global multi-stakeholder organization. This requires much more than talking as His Excellency said to one government. The Italian government cannot act in isolation of the European Union. It is not a question of governments only, it's also a question of organizations like civil society and private sector who is becoming more and more, you know, the number one donor in the world for refugee, for humanitarian cause is not the United States of America, which is the largest economy of the world. The number one donor is, donor, donor is the United Arab Emirates, that small country according to a, rep to a report by the o OECD, it's not me. The OECD just issued a report that uh, number one in the world. So, so we need these private donors like governments and the private business. So I am preparing a proposal to Ban Ki-moon on how to structure a multinational, a multi-stakeholder organization that would address the questions of refugees. I even asked, I, I was part of the process of formulating the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals.